I am really excited to have with us somebody who's very special and important. Um, he's a former campaign manager for the Trump uh, 2020 campaign, uh, for the Trump 2016 race, and um, he's the senior advisor and spokesman for America First Action. We have Corey Lewandowski with us. Hello, Corey. Hey, David, how are you? Thank you for having me. Good, sorry, I got jumbled up on my words there. Um, I'm so excited. I, I got back from Mar-a-Lago. I was with the president and Ron DeSantis, the best governor in the country, um, last Friday. And then three weeks ago with Christy Noem and Trump came down and hang, hung out with us for a half an hour. Uh, he looks great, right? He's energized. The, the president is unbelievably relaxed, and I mean that in a good way. I think you know, not being the president has reduced a lot of stress. But more than that, uh, he reminds me of Donald Trump of 2015. He's ready to fight. He is ready to bring this fight right to the American people. And we have seen what the new administration is doing, which is destroying our way of life, undoing everything that Donald Trump fought for. And he's not going to stand by idly and let that happen. So tell us a little bit about America First Action. It's a new pack. Where can our viewers find you? Well, look, the truth is what we're going to do is uh, the president's asked me to oversee what is called a super PAC, which is the organization that can raise unlimited dollars from both individuals and corporate America. It's all disclosable. But our goal with this money is to make sure that we're helping support candidates who support the America First agenda and oppose those that don't. We're going to be very involved in a number of races. What we're seeing is President Trump is making endorsements uh, in a number of races, whether it's Sarah Huckabee's race for governor in Arkansas, it's Max Miller's race for Congress in Ohio. And we're gonna use the resources we have to go in and make sure that people understand which candidates support Donald Trump and his policies and which ones don't. We're also gonna keep those resources in place. Should Donald Trump decide in the future, he wants to run for president again, we'll be ready to go. Um, so Trump, supported like 25 congressional candidates. And I believe he won 23 of those races, right? He's, uh, he really uh, pulled through for these guys, including McConnell, right? He sure did. Look, the president's endorsement, particularly in the Republican primary, is the most important factor in those primary elections. I think of the 85 Republican candidates he endorsed in primaries, 84 of them won. And so that's how powerful it is. And more than that, you know, the the, the notion that you've got President Trump in your corner is the stamp of approval that 75 million voters around this country want to see because they're tired of a broken Washington. And let me say this, Kevin McCarthy and Mitch McConnell, Donald Trump and I all have the same objective. We wanna see Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer leave and lose their leadership positions in Washington. But we have different ways of achieving that objective. And just because you're a Republican, if you voted to support the impeachment of Donald Trump, there is a reciprocity coming. There is going, there is a there is a process for us at the ballot box to hold you accountable for that. And we will be doing that. And I can promise you, Donald Trump will be engaged in the 2022 election cycle, both for members of Congress, for the US Senate, and for governors around the country. And we saw him just this week supporting Jody Heiss for Secretary of State in Georgia. That's a place we're gonna spend a lot of time. So how many seats do you project you can take in the House, right? You only need five or six to catch up. Uh, is, is it something like, are you targeting 18 races? Uh, is there a number? Well, it's gonna be much bigger than that. And the reason is, and I'll remind your viewers, Bill Clinton's first term in office uh, in his first midterm election, he lost 54 seats. Barack wow. Obama lost 63 seats. That right. being said, if we end up somewhere in between and the Republicans gain 55 seats, it'll be a complete blowout. The Democrats have the smallest margin right now of a majority they've ever had. And what we're seeing is their far, far left policies are very detrimental to the American people. So we're gonna see a big backlash. And while we have our initial target list of at least a dozen races, my guess is as the political climate continues to get better for Republicans, as more people are disappointed in what the Democrats' lack of leadership is doing, that target list is going to grow and expand. And we're gonna be very focused on picking up Senate opportunities around this country so we can take back the majority and expanding our targets in the congressional races, particularly after redistricting takes place in October. I was down at the border uh, about a year and a half ago, and the week, the week I was down there, four children drowned. Another three-year-old was found walking in the desert with their diapers on. Our co-host, Ben Burkwam here at Real America's Voice has been giving hard-hitting proof of, of, of coyotes and drug scouts and cartel scouts on the border. Um, you know, 
what, what, what's going to happen here? Are the Democrats going to try to give amnesty to millions of illegal aliens here and the Republicans never win again? Well, it seems to be there's two components of this. Number one, uh, we're the only civilized country in the world that simply said we're not going to protect our borders. And that's what Joe Biden has decided. Uh, and so what they're doing is they're allowing people to come from South America all the way through Central America into our country unfettered. And we know that a number of these people are carrying diseases. A number of them are being raped and pillaged uh, during that terrible journey because of the system that's in place right there. And what we know is that all of these policies have changed since Joe Biden has become the president of the United States. We don't have the facilities to house these people. We know some of them are COVID positive and they're being released out into our communities. We're knowing that even the simple paperwork required for them to reappear in court in the future is not being conducted because we have such a massive influx. And then what we have seen is that the Democrats simply think that once you step foot into our country, you become a citizen of this country. It's not true. It's not the case in any other civilized country in the world. We should have a system in place like Donald Trump talked about, which is an immigration system that's based on merit, like Canada has, like Australia has, and that is beneficial to our country. See, America yeah. first doesn't mean America alone, but it means we're gonna protect our people first. And we've got a lot of problems in this country we need to fix. Let's stop bringing more problems into our country by having our small communities on the border overrun with people who shouldn't be there in the first place. Yeah, I hear there's a state of emergency in a few towns and counties on the southern border right now. Um, and these facilities are filled like seven times over what they can handle. Um, what really bothers me, um, and last question for you, is you know Rachel Levine gets confirmed. confirmed. You know, she's for, give, for Health and Human Services Secretary. She's for giving uh, hormone blockers, puberty blockers for three-year-olds uh, to begin transitioning process. She hid her mother in a nursing home while everyone else died in the nursing homes in Pennsylvania. She's a bad actor. And, you know, and then Murkowski and Collins bring the Senate over the top for the Democrats. And now we have her. Why won't they do the same for gun control? And why won't they do the same for uh, illegal aliens giving them amnesty? Isn't this a real threat right now? Well, it's a huge threat, but here's the thing, David, we shouldn't be surprised. The Democrats are very forward in telling us exactly what they wanted to do. That's why the elections in Georgia were so critical. The Democrats told us they're gonna bankrupt our children and our grandchildren. They told us they're not gonna support our military. You don't have to stand for the flag anymore. You don't have to kneel for God anymore. You don't have to, you know, you're gonna pay reparations to everybody. And, uh, you know, we're gonna have an uncivilized society. They told us that they're gonna take away our guns and they're gonna bankrupt us. And we said, no, they won't really do that. Then they're gonna pack the Supreme Court. Of course they're gonna do that. Then they're gonna change the filibuster rules. Of course they're gonna do that because the Democrats don't play fair. They're very unified in their opposition to us. They don't agree with our way of life. They don't agree that we're the greatest country in the history of the world. They think that we need to be giving more back to everybody as opposed to taking care of the American people here. You know, it's scary when you can't walk down the streets in Chicago without fear of being shot. And instead, we're allowing more people to come into the country as opposed to taking care of our own. Yeah, so I'm in New York here and crime's up 180% on the subway, shootings are up 110%, murders are up 30%, and one third of our small businesses are gone forever. And the, there's a sea change in the mentality of people up here. It's like the zombie apocalypse. People are beaten down. Uh, you know, small business has no voice here in, with the government. And we're getting crushed, and I'm really uh, uh, sad about it. And all these red states are open with three to five percent unemployment. We all have nine to thirteen percent unemployment in the blue states. The lockdowns were a huge mistake. We're going to kill three times as many people uh, than we're saving, um, according to Stanford University, from these lockdowns. Um, you know, do you see things? Uh, any pressure on the blue states to open up? We have about a minute. Well, I sure hope so. Look, here's what we've seen. These governors have overstepped their bounds. And what the scary part is to me, David, is that the American people just gave up their rights. I mean, they gave up the right to assemble, the right to, to worship, the right for free speech under this world of COVID. You know, these governors overreached and they told you you weren't an essential business. And they defined what that was in almost every single state in the country. And these blue states are suffering dramatically because of it. Unemployment is up in those places. The red states are thriving. When you look at states like South Dakota and Florida, when you've got governors who understand how important it is that small businesses survive, that don't define what an essential small business is, that's where people are going to. But what scares me the most 
is how quickly people gave up their own freedoms under the Constitution because of the world of COVID. Look, I don't think any small business owner should have had to close, regardless of what the governor said. There's an issue of personal responsibility. We're gonna see a long-term impact. It's gonna take a long time for places like New York City and other big cities to ever come back to where they were pre-COVID. Yeah, it's really terrible. And all these uh, Democratic Che Guevara style fake leaders, celebrity leaders are choking on caviar in private with no masks on. Uh, Corey Lewandowski, um, I want to thank you so much. You're really important to this country. Keep up the fight and we'll have you back, okay? Thank you so much. Great, super everybody. Corey Lewandowski, and uh, you got to, you know, get be part of this new PAC, America First Action. He's the senior advisor and spokesman. And, um, you know, this, this is like so important. Um, you know, thank God Trump was president during COVID because... If we had a Democrat in office doing COVID, it would even be darker than it already is. And remember, Biden promised us a dark winter, right? And it's here, you know? Um, we only have a few days. Um, I, I, I listen, uh, I'm, I'm very frustrated. Uh, people are losing their businesses, intergenerational businesses, two and three generations deep. They can't reopen. Um, people are dying left and right from heart attacks and strokes and cancer and stuff. They're not getting treated and mental anguish. And it's time to stand up, take off your mask, take off your mask when you're outside, take off your mask, fight back. And if you had the COVID and you are vaccinated, you don't need the mask anymore. This is David Zier. We will be right back.